talk about the, the, I don't know if it was mice or rats. I think it was rats where you force them to fight and they're like in a tube and you like that, that study to me tied with what you just said is insanely powerful, especially for people who've allowed themselves to become paralyzed by, yeah. you know, fear or whatever. Forward movement provided it doesn't endanger you or kill you is absolutely the remedy for fear, stress, and all, and at least in the clinical literature to these sort of trauma events, you know, that, that people carry with them for many years. Of course, trauma needs to be dealt with, hopefully with a professional, but we can all apply these mechanisms and these neurochemical reward schedules. So the, the study that you're referring to is a beautiful one. Um, there's a classic study where researchers, not my lab, put two rats, or you could do this with mice, into a tube. And the tendency is for them to try and push one or the other one out. One always wins and pushes the other one out. We call the one that got pushed out the loser, the one that pushed him out the winner. Here are the interesting things about this. First of all, the winner will tend to win with other in other battles, even though these are just pushing battles, more because it simply won the time before. The loser, by losing, will tend to lose. And so people say, oh, well, that explains a lot about society, et cetera. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. You can even take a mouse or a rat and push it from behind and make it the winner. And then on subsequent trials where you're not pushing it, it will tend to win more often. So the win doesn't even have to come from itself. So last year, there was a very important paper published about this where a set of researchers just said, well, what is it? Like, what is this winning circuit and this losing circuit? Enough with the demonstration that this happens. Like, what's happening on? What's under the hood? And so they went into the brain and they identified a brain area, which is part of the frontal cortex, the area that we typically think about planning, action, executive function, all the kind of high level stuff. And what they discovered was this brain area is more active in the winner than in the loser. In fact, they could take the loser and overstimulate this area and turn the losers into winners. Now, it gets even more ridiculous than that. If you quiet this brain area, winners become losers, okay? And, oh. and if you take a winner and let's say at this tube battle and you put them into, let's say, a cold environment with a bunch of other mice and you have just a warm corner, mice don't like to be cold, and you say, who gets the warm corner? right? Who gets the luxury spot? It's always the winner. So it even breaks down at the level of social interactions. And so you say, okay, all right, now we know that it's this brain area. It's this, it's this one area of the frontal cortex, but what's it actually doing, right? Okay. What's it actually, what, how can we translate this? Turns out this brain area that's responsible and required for winning in this series of experiments is actually driving up the level of activation, what you and I would call agitation or stress to the point where that animal is more likely to move forward. It's simply taking stress, which is wired into us in order to make us feel agitated, instead of suppressing us, you know, instead of saying, you know what, I'm just gonna sit here, I'm overwhelmed, I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna move into action. So there's a circuit for winning. There's a, the same circuit when it's hypoactive, not active enough, is what causes losing in these competitive scenarios. And Similarly, there's a circuit for quitting. There's an, a norepinephrine circuit in the brainstem. This was published in the last couple of years, showing that when animals or people are in constant effort, eventually that level of norepinephrine gets so high that it triggers a circuit that shuts down the motor control over the limbs, and you just say, that's it, I give up, I'm done. So these mechanisms were hardwired into us. We all have them. Whether or not it's from evolution, mother nature, God, the universe, it is, it's irrelevant to the discussion that these circuits exist in everybody. And I think it's a select few people who really understand that forward action is what drives these circuits. It's the ability to take that agitation, stress, agitation, increase our focus, and they bias us for movement. And nature wanted that. They want us to move forward in the face of challenge, not to be quiescent. We weren't sitting around b battling tigers and saber-toothed tigers all the time, more likely we were in caves and we were getting hungry and we had to go out and search for things. Agitation and stress were designed to get us up and move us. And when we try and fight that too much and we try and quiet that stress, that actually can be problematic. You have to decide, are you gonna try and quiet stress or are you gonna actually lean into action? That's a critical choice point for everybody who's experienced anything negative or positive for that matter.